Hey everybody, today I just wanted to talk about a documentary I saw that really piqued my interest. It's called End Times, How Close Are We? and it was made in 2006. The film is about what it sounds like. Randall Price, an evangelical scholar, takes us through the nitty gritty of the apocalypse. How will we know it's happening? What signs should we look out for? How close are we to the end? Etc. Many Bible scholars believe strongly we may well be living in the final days. What leads them to this conclusion? An obscure interpretation of some cryptic Bible verses? Or could it be something much more obvious? So I'm probably not going to do a great job at this. A lot of the details seem kind of murky to me. But let me just start off here by summarizing this documentary's roadmap of the Christian apocalypse. At some point, conflicts in the Middle East surrounding Israel will escalate and begin to threaten everything. Then, the Antichrist will emerge, a charismatic, seemingly great leader who will unite the entire world and bring peace to the Middle East. According to the Bible, the Middle East crisis will continue to grow until it threatens the peace of the whole world. This will bring a world leader to the forefront who will be welcomed with open arms. He is the Antichrist. He will manage to secure the Temple Mount for the Jewish people, allowing them to rebuild their ancient temple. So far, this all sounds amazing, right? Big Temple? Hello? Uh, but this Antichrist guy isn't as great as he seems. His authoritarian government will make the world awful, there will be famine and genocide, and there will be a massive war, Armageddon, the Antichrist and his forces versus everyone else. The Antichrist will become a global dictator, and when the time is right, he will take control of the world's commerce to the point where no one will be able to buy or sell anything without taking his dreaded mark of 666. Anyway, at some point in this seven-year process called the Tribulations, true Christians will be raptured and get to spend eternity with Jesus Christ. So, the first thing that jumps out to me about this documentary is just how good this theory of the apocalypse is at collecting and using global events to prove itself right, how effective it is at incorporating information. In the film, the volcanic activity under Yellowstone National Park serves as evidence that a divine cataclysm could happen. The rise of China means that Chinese people will likely populate the army against the Antichrist. There's only one country in the world that could field an army of 200 million people, and that is China. Credit cards, having recently replaced cash in many contexts, might be helpful to the Antichrist and his globalist desire to control commerce. More and more, we are moving away from paper and coin money and using plastic and barcodes to not only transact business, but to convey information about each transaction to entities. Whether or not this is the system the Antichrist will eventually use, the Bible warns us that anyone who takes the mark of the beast is doomed to spend eternity in hell. Hurricane Andrew may have been God's wrath against the United States for suggesting that Israel give land to Palestine. August 24th, 1992, the Madrid Conference convened in Washington, D.C. On the very same day, Hurricane Andrew, the largest hurricane at that time in U.S. history, pummeled the state of Louisiana. The pyramids might be the shape of the New Jerusalem. This measurement has led many scholars to believe that the New Jerusalem is a cube, but there is one other geometric model that fits the criteria, and this is a pyramid. This is my favorite clip from the film. This theory of the end times is totalizing. For every event and observation, there is a corresponding apocalyptic meaning. And in this way, the entire world becomes one massive religion religious text in a constant state of interpretation and reinterpretation. There is no real way to disprove claims about the apocalypse because these claims are the building blocks of reality itself. So, this documentary attempts to answer a lot of questions, obviously. The entire purpose of this kind of apocalyptic thinking is to answer questions, to give an evangelical account of everything that has ever happened. But in the end, what I find more interesting in this film are the questions it does not or cannot answer. Specifically, how is the audience supposed to react to this information? How should they process it? How exactly are Christians supposed to feel about the imminent apocalypse? 
Let's look at the Hurricane Andrew example from before. The day after George H.W. Bush suggested giving Palestine some land, a storm hit Louisiana. And this very well may have been God's wrath because he promised Israel to the Jews. Those nations or those people that bless the Jewish people will be blessed and those who curse them will be cursed. This suggests that America is doing a bad thing by standing in the way of Israeli unification, by advocating even slightly on behalf of Palestinians. And this bears out in the way evangelicals behave, too. They are, as a bloc, extreme Zionists. According to a poll in the Washington Post, 80% of evangelical Christians believe that the creation of Israel was a fulfillment of biblical prophecy, and around 50% said that that one reason they support Israel is because of the importance of that prophecy. But that's so weird, right? Because as we already know, the person who is ultimately bound to unify Israel, to allow the sons of Isaac to rebuild their temple, is the literal Antichrist, the font of evil, the first horseman of the apocalypse. So, okay, I guess this breed of Christian is tactically in favor of the Antichrist. Their interests are aligned. And you know, that's certainly odd, but fine. I, I guess it makes sense. The apocalypse is good. It's something every Christian looks forward to. Indeed, what's happening in these days confirms and fulfills the reality and the validity of the scriptures and also points to a glorious event called the blessed hope, not hopelessness, but hope for the believer, and that's the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we should feel nice about Israel having all the land, about taking a step toward Armageddon. But this hardlining pro-apocalypse logic, it's not like consistent in the documentary. For example, one sign that the end times are coming is that people become more sinful. They engage in more divorce and drug use and abortion and sexual debauchery. But as this generation continues to push the moral boundaries further and further, we find ourselves closer than ever to fulfilling the conditions Paul described. The kids who are now getting married today, they're getting married older. They had uh, a tremendous amount of, of sex and abortion, venereal disease, including AIDS. And you might notice something here. Evangelical Christians broadly are not into those things. In fact, their domestic policy surrounds stopping them as much as humanly possible. And if we are supposed to be so in favor of the apocalypse, why would we do that? Why would we try to prevent the inevitable and ultimately beautiful thing that's going on here. And we can feel this unease with the apocalypse at another point in the documentary, when they talk about rapture. So apparently, there's some disagreement over when exactly Christians will be saved by Jesus from the apocalypse, and it's a point that's fairly central to the film. Some Christians believe that the rapture will occur before the tribulations, that is, before the world becomes horrible. Others believe the rapture will happen toward the middle of the tribulations. And still Still others believe that Christians will have to experience all seven awful, famine-ridden, genocidal years. Another theory, which holds to a post-tribulation time frame for Christ's return, says Christians will remain on earth for the entire seven years. And you get a feeling from Randall Price's narration that he's really hoping the rapture will happen early on, that having to endure the tribulations would be a bad thing. With the terrifying descriptions the Bible offers of the tribulation period, it's comforting for Christians to believe that we will not have to endure this frightening reality. But is this really the case? Christians the world over look forward to this amazing day. But can we be sure it will take place before the tribulation? That makes sense, of course, but it also speaks to a deep contradiction at the heart of the end times. In one breath, the apocalypse is something to look forward to. It is a reward for our faith, and the actions that bring it about can be treated as uncontroversially good. There are ultimately places where God and the Antichrist agree. In the next breath, though, we live in the reality of the situation. The world will be destroyed, and we might have to be there to watch it, and we don't want that. Christ is an enigmatic and scary figure, and he might make us live through through some truly awful things before he finally saves us. 
In this way, through these contradictions, the documentary fails to tell us anything about the world, about how we should understand its end, about what we should do in the meantime. The apocalypse doesn't direct us to any kind of opinion or reaction, but to all possible reactions simultaneously. To state the obvious, if you are an evangelical Christian enjoying this documentary, there's something potentially useful about that. And that's for the simple reason that you're allowed to think whatever you want. You can think it's good to fulfill biblical prophecy when it comes to the Antichrist's actions in Israel, and you can ignore the biblical prophecy when it comes to gay people and their part in the end of the world. The apocalypse describes a kind of moral freedom. Still, there's something unsettling about it, at least there is to me. The apocalypse of this film is the culmination of the story of everything. It is the words of Christ made real. It seems to lend reality a grand and totalizing vision to tell us that the world is a just place and that God will have his say. And yet, it cannot give us meaning. It cannot be understood as good or bad or direct us toward any action. We cannot develop a stable relationship to the apocalypse. In the end, this documentary can only disorient, leave us untethered on a dying planet with no discernible purpose. Okay, uh, uh, bye. <laughs>